right, guys, so sorry to scroll right there. Um, but we're going to get into the mesh tool on Illustrator a little bit more. So it's going to be really important that you gather this information. Um, I can put these on a different color post-it note and go ahead and put those on your computers as well. So you have one set of Photoshop and then one set of Illustrator. These are just some common ones that you'll be util utilizing often um, on this particular project. So the V, if you tap the V on the keyboard, it'll turn on the selection tool. And that one is that one right there. So that normal selection tool. If you tap the A, it's the direct select. That's guy right there. Um, the I is your eyedropper tool, which I thought was quite appropriate. Um, control and click on the eyeball and the layers to put it in outline mode. You'll see that momentarily. And then alt click to shorten handles on a curve. And you'll see that shortly. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves started. When you first come in, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. Okay. When you first come in, it's really important that you guys take the time to um, open up the right file. So I'm going to be giving you a file. When we're working with a mesh tool, I showed you a way where you can go around and you can draw with a pen tool. So that was yesterday's demo. Today's is going to change that up a little bit. It's going to give a little bit more precision to what it is we're doing. Basically what you do is you start off with a shape. So you look and see and you have to almost dissect it visually and say, I'm going to make this whole piece as one right here. This is a second shape. This is a second, a third shape, fourth shape, etc. Do not outline the entire thing as one piece. That is where you will very quickly go awry in this particular project and in Illustrator in general because you lose control. All right. So once this is open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my background layer. My artboard is right here. It looks like almost a couple sheets of stacked paper. That's where your layers are going to be located. I'm going to go ahead and click right there. That's my lock. I can no longer do anything to that layer, which is very, very important. I want you to start building these pieces in layers so you can turn them on and off as needed. Okay? And of course, I just turned mine on. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and press this. I'm going to create a new layer. You can rename that. Easy to rename. You just click, click right there, and you could rename this. I don't need you to rename it right now, but you can't, okay? So I'm going to start off with a rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a rectangle in here that's about the size of this particular piece or lobe of the pepper. I'm going to go to my selection tool and make it just a little bit bigger because you want it to cover all of that area. Notice it's filled with a color. I'm going to go ahead and just put this in outline mode. And that's what I was talking about over here with that whole control click on the eyeball. Outline mode will take all color out of it because some of you are working and finding out that the color got in your way while you were trying to fix things, quote unquote. Right over here, you've got that eyeball. I'm going to hit the control key, CTRL on my keyboard. And I'm going to click right there. You can see that the pupil and iris actually go away on that particular eyeball. So it's in, it's in um, outline mode. Okay, I'm going to go back to what we know from yesterday, mesh tool. If I click in the center, it's going to give me basically this whole thing gridded up in four pieces. Okay, got my four pieces. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm control plusing. You should be familiar with that. I'm going to go ahead with my direct selection tool. I am going to grab one of my anchor points and click on it to activate it. Then I'm going to go ahead and move it into place. You can see I get a little bit of a handle right there. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of bad because it's red. I can drag that handle up and over to get a better curve up there. I'm going to click on this anchor point. I'm going to pull that guy down. I'm going to click on this anchor point, and I'm going to go ahead and pull him over. Now my handles, you can see, still give me a peek. I don't want a peek. No pun intended. I know the holidays are coming, but, you know, I'm going to, get, I'm going to grab that handle, pull it to the outside, and then I would also suggest that you shorten it. Basically, I just click and see how long it's getting. I can go ahead and just grab that and shorten it just to keep it a little bit more tidy. Don't keep these handles everywhere it's sticking out, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and shorten that guy. Um, this one I'm okay with. He's looking pretty good. I'm going to grab this one. Again, click once to activate. Click and hold to move them in. And then go ahead and move your handle. 
Notice I can manipulate where those candles are located to also give a different kind of a curve. So that's kind of important. You want to do that. Click on this anchor point. I might move them over a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and fix this guy up a little. I need to smooth that out. Let me zoom. Get a little crossover there. Notice that was crossed over. And because it was crossed over, gave me a little bit of a funky edge. Now, again, if I have a tiny bit more of that pepper showing, um, it's okay. Oh, there we go. Very touchy. There we go. I'm going to go ahead back over here. Click on that anchor point. Move it. Change my curve. Pull that guy back in. I'm going to go ahead and study up here. I'm pretty happy where that one's going. I'm going to zoom back out, control minus, and that I'm pretty happy with, okay? So I'm going to start a general fill. And what we usually do is I'm going to have to unlock this pepper layer, okay? I'm going to go to my selection tool, and I'm going to move that pepper over because I want to see these values and have this one right here separately placed. I can put them together later, but it's nice and easy to separate them, okay? First things first, I'm going to go to, um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn my um, regular color mode back on, take it out of outline view, and then I'm going to go ahead and select it. Once I selected it, I go to my eyedropper. I'm going to get the most general red that's in the, kind of the bulk of the pepper, and I've got that settled. I can now start to add some shadowing here. Notice I don't have as many grid marks as you had. I can add more as we go. So if I'm coming in here, I can now that I have this all nicely placed, I can go ahead and notice I have like this little highlight there. So I'm going to try to put a grid mark. I click right around where that highlight would be. Notice it gives me the grid mark in there horizontally and vertically. I can also go ahead and add another one. If I just click on an edge, a top or bottom edge gives me a vertical a left or right edge will give me a horizontal. So I've added all those grid lines in. Now I'm ready to rock and roll with some color, okay? If I grab one anchor point, what I do is I go to my direct selection tool. I go ahead and grab one anchor. Make sure it's an anchor, not a handle. I can then grab that darker pepper color, and I can pop that color over in the corner. Let's say I want this color up there. You can see it's starting to peek a little bit of that in there. I'm going to go ahead and actually grab multiples now. I hold the shift key. I click on the first one, hold the shift key, and I go ahead and I select all of those. I'm going to select these as well, the ones that are kind of next to it. Okay, notice they're changed. Their color's now in red. That means, I think I missed, there we go. Notice they're in red. Again, terrible. Next time I do this, I'll make sure that it's not a red on red. Um, but notice these anchor points are white. And these are now red because they're active. Again, I'm going to go back to my eyedropper tool. I'm going to grab that darker value. And you can actually see, if I grab a really wonky color, you can see it really come in. But again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that little bit of a darker value in there. Now I'm going to go right there. Then I'm going to go back here. I'm going to attack these guys a little bit more by holding, again, that shift key. I just grabbed the bottom. And I'm going to grab that one. So I kind of have this area here. I'm going to grab that value. I'm going to go ahead with a darker value in there. And then I could say, mm, no, I think it's too dark over here, so I could undo it with Control-Z. Or I could just grab that anchor point, and I could just, again, resample that red color to reduce that a little bit. Okay? Now I can also grab some of these end points, like right here on the bottom. I've got that Shift key held. I've got all those along the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead again, right back with my eyedropper, and I'm going to grab that dark value. Now, if I wanted to, I could um, undo that. I could come back in with um, another grid line. So I can come back in with another grid line in here. Of course, I could change that color now. But that can minimize how much go back in there, I changed it back. That can minimize because that shadow came up more than I really wanted to. Again, holding that shift key, I'm grabbing those edges, and then I'm going to eyedropper, 
I'm going to grab that dark value. You can see how it's really brought it down and keeps it really delicate. I'm going to come in here now. I'm going to start to add that highlight. I also will attack the side and give a little bit of darkness onto that edge. Scooch that guy over just a little bit. Back to my, again, this one will directly select a point. That's why that one's super important. So let's say I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab those guys again. Hold the shift key. Hold the shift key. I'm going to scroll down with my mouse. Grab the shift key on those guys. And then I may come in with that value over that gave just a little bit of value. I could pop in another um, mesh line right over there and give additional levels of value in there to kind of keep that sort of hugged closely. But I will work on that um, eventually. I'll get back to that. Okay. So as I go into here, I'm going to go ahead and start working into that highlight. And I'm going to grab two. I'm going to go ahead and grab both of those. And I'm going to start off with a medium value. So I'm going to go ahead and get kind of like this rosy pinkish color. I can then take with my direct select tool and I can manipulate it with those handles. I could also manipulate where it ends up. So these handles are going to be really important because you can see I've spread out that shadow quite a bit. I could also, again, go back in and I could drop another point in here if I wanted to give a cap on that. Now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to directly select just one point now. Eyedropper, the brightest value. Again. Come back in, grab that handle, oh, grab the wrong handle. Control Z is your best friend, you guys, so please keep that in mind. Make sure you're grabbing those handles appropriately so that you can minimize and maximize. That one looks terrible. I would go back and fix that. Probably undo, Control Z, okay? That's what I have right now, but that's with very little work, okay? So what I'm going to do next, though, is I'm going to come back in, I might pull that pepper back over that spot. I can put that on isolation mode. And I can come in with a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead back in here. And I'm going to create this piece. And the same thing would go. And I would continue on my way um, utilizing all those different tools. And eventually, you would, uh, you would start to build up your apple and its shape. Okay, I have another one on a different file. You can see that there are different layers here. There are different ways to attack this pepper using that mesh tool. This one I use the pen tool with, and I kind of wish this whole piece right here. Nope, I lied. Okay, I've got to find it. Okay, I've got to find it. But that whole piece up in the front was one I felt it looked a little flat. So I'm kind of happy about the idea of coming in with coming in with a different shape in order to be able to get those shadows in there and showcase that pepper a little bit more. So again, at this stage, you've created it. You're going to go ahead and put it in mesh. Click the middle. I then isolate it by control clicking, and I have no color present in that particular layer. Sorry, mine's acting up a little bit right now. All right, well, for some, there we go. I don't know what's going on. Mine is lagging a lot. Um, and at that stage, I would then go ahead and attack it like I did with the rest using a combination of direct select, and your eyedropper tool. Bring this guy off to the side so you can select those values from him after he's traced. If you do it before he's traced, you're going to end up obviously not with the right shape. Okay, so that is what you're going to be doing today.